providing for a calm environment is also important. Many patients with heart disease have difficulty breathing and require special positioning to help them breathe easier. Some may need to rest in a semi-sitting position supported with two and maybe even three pillows. Swelling, uh, again called edema, in the legs and feet interferes with circulation of the blood which can lead to skin breakdown. Keep the legs elevated as much as possible to reduce that edema. Elevating the legs improves the flow of blood back to the heart. In order to decrease the workload of the heart, the patient needs to be at a weight that is appropriate for his or her body height and build. Many times the physician will order a calorie restricted or a fluid restricted diet. The patient may need a good deal of support and encouragement in, and teaching in order to follow that diet. Most patients with heart disease have a problem with fluid re retention and overload. Fluid retention, as mentioned earlier, causes the heart to have to work harder and produces excess edema. An important factor related to fluid retention is sodium or salt intake. Salt causes the tissues to hold onto water. Foods that are naturally high in salt are such things as uh, cheese, bacon, cold cuts, and canned soups. Salt restrictions are not easy to live with and patients often complain that their food is bland and doesn't taste very, um, very uh, palatable. Salt su substitutes are available that can help enhance flavors. Other things besides salt substitutes might be the addition of other spices that don't have sodium in them or things like uh, um, lemon can improve the taste of things. Helping patients understand the reason for dietary restrictions may help them follow them a little more easily. When you as a caregiver recognize the signs and symptoms of various forms of heart disease, you're able to notice su subtle changes in um, your patients and report them immediately. Medications and treatments then can then be started before an emergency arises. Note changes in blood pressure if you're able to take blood pressures in your facility and compare those, those to previous readings. Also pay particular attention to the rate, rhythm, and pulse of your patients as well as their breathing pattern. Observe and report any sudden changes in behavior, orientation, sleeping, and eating patterns. Pay particular attention to circulatory changes such as the presence of swelling in their legs. Never assume that the symptoms are due to old age or that your patient is just a complainer. All symptoms of chest pain, difficulty breathing, or even the patient's report that he or she is feeling different or strange needs to be reported so that um, it can be acted upon quickly. Since the early 1900s, heart disease has been the leading cause of death in the United States. There is a great deal of interest and public education concerning ways to lower the risk of heart disease in this country. Obviously, some risk factors such as a person's age, family history, or gender, whether you're male or female, cannot be modified or changed. But the American Heart Association has identified a number of major risk factors and health-promoting behaviors that can be changed to decrease the risk of heart disease. I'd like to cover now some of those major risk factors and health-promoting behaviors that can be done to prevent heart disease. 
First major risk factor is hypertension or high blood pressure. A health promoting behavior that can happen in order to decrease that risk is to have regular blood pressure checks so that if the blood pressure is creeping up over 140, over 90, early intervention can occur. Also, for those that have a history of high blood pressure, to be sure to take that blood pressure, high blood pressure medication to keep it under control and to reduce the amount of salt in the diet. High blood cholesterol is another major risk factor for the development of heart disease. That means reduce the amount of fat and other fat intake in the diet. Maintain the ideal body weight. Increase the amount of carbohydrates and vegetables in the diet. Smoking is another major risk factor. One health promoting uh, behavior that can occur is to enroll in a structured program to stop smoking. You may need, if you're a smoker, to change your daily routine that's associated with smoking to reduce that desire and ask family members to help support your efforts to stop smoking. Physical inactivity is also a known risk factor for the development of heart disease. A way to combat that is to develop and maintain a routine of physical activity at least three times a week. Incorporate physical activity into your daily routine such things as taking the stairs instead of the elevator, parking your car a fair distance from the buildings that you're going to be accessing, a riding a bike instead of always taking the car. A stressful lifestyle is another major risk factor. Ways to combat that is alter your pattern that may increase stress in your life, such things as rushing, Maybe you would need to set your alarm 30 minutes earlier so that you're not as rushed in the morning will help reduce the amount of stress. Maybe meditation may help reduce the amount of stress in your life. Try to set realistic goals for yourself and not cram too much into a given day. Reassess priorities in light of health needs and plan time for adequate rest and downtime. Obesity is another major risk factor. Try to reduce the calorie intake. Eliminate the amount of fast foods that are eaten and avoid crash diets which usually in the long run don't work anyway. Diabetes mellitus is also a risk factor for the development of heart disease. People who have diabetes need to follow the recommended diet, make sure that they're monitoring their blood glucose levels regularly, and make certain that their medication, uh, if they're on insulin, is taken on as prescribed, and that they have regular scheduled uh, communication with their health care provider. New techniques for the treatment of various forms of heart disease and an increasing amount of health conscious American society are contributing to a reduction in the number of deaths due to heart disease. It's helpful to understand what heart disease is, which ones are most common, and how you can assist patients who have heart disease to lead healthy, productive lives.